What's going on traders? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. And of course, I wish you a fantastic weekend. So today we're going to be going over the weekly Forex outlook and reviews. And we're going to be looking at 10 pairs. Actually, I think 11 pairs today. And just see what we can find in the markets moving forward into next week. This week has been an absolutely epic week of trading. Um, one of the most unbelievable weeks in the last two months. And I can only think to myself that it's just going to get better. Of course, the unfortunate events that happen in the world right now, my thoughts and my prayers go out to everybody who's been affected. Now, I just want to say to you guys that we have today officially launched the 12 week program. And to be honest with you guys, I don't really promote, but I just want to say to those that haven't got in yet, this is going to be a life changing experience. There'll be weekly tasks that will be extremely demanding. You know, there will be accountability exercises that will really put you to the test. And over the 12 weeks, my focus will be to push every single one of you to your limits to make sure that we undo all the bad habits that are causing you to get the results that you're getting and start to rebuild the new habits that will lead to becoming consistent and profitable. Now, as I said, I don't promote, but I really do believe this is a life-changing experience. I've put a lot of time into this over the last year and a half. So if you haven't joined, we're running a test group. Get in, let's get this party started, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. But without further ado, let's get on with the show. So traders, we're going to be going over 11 pairs, as I mentioned. We usually do 10, but we're going to be doing 11 today. And the first pair that we're going to be taking a look at is pound USD. Now, um, as I said, we have seen the unfortunate events that is happening in the world right now. And uh, again, my thoughts and prayers go out to those who are being affected. But when these events happen as traders, you know, we are able to capitalize because that's when the volatility in the market starts to kick in. And that's really what we're looking for. Obviously not a war, but we are looking for that volatility. Now you can see that a lot of investors have started to invest their money into the dollar. And of course this is expected. Um, we do expect this as well with potentially the yen and also gold. And uh, some of you might have already seen gold has been pushing to the upside for a long, very long period of time. So with pound USD, you know, we can immediately see that the overall sentiment of the market is bearish. Nothing here tells us otherwise that we should be looking for buys. Now, what we want to be looking at here is the area of consolidation that we've been suffering for the, let's say, the last two months now. And we want to view this area as the potential retest area in the market, or at least an area in the market, as long as price trades below, we can continue to look for sales. Now, I don't really want to see a pullback to 35.11. I don't want to see you know, that much uncertainty. I want to see real strength and volume in the dollar. So for me personally, my main focus, whether it happens or not, is a different story. But I'm going to be looking for price to break below 35.57. Um, and look for that bearish sentiment again, kicking back in with the volume and then looking for those retests and continuations back to the downside as soon as this market breaks this level where it's been failing to break. Now, we did put in a low here. So this would be an intraday level low where you have to monitor for potentially management levels in the market, either for take profits or even for break evens if you're going to be holding it for long periods of time. But this is a 82 pip range. So I would say personally, there's nothing to uh, discourage you from holding this for a good period of time. And if you're anything like what I do in terms of my trading style, you know, I could easily find myself a 6, 10, 15 pip stop loss and take advantage of a very big move here within this range. So be patient, but this would be my plan with pound USD. Now, the next pair that we'll take a look at is Euro USD. Now we can see what we said we'd like to see on pound USD here, the consolidation area in the market that has been broken. And now we can start to see price coming back to that area for that retesting continuation. Now, what I will say to you is we are in this pullback phase. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're looking for buyers at this stage. Again, as long as we trade below 1304, we're still good for sales. But as we are coming back to this area, then I think it would be good to wait for price to get deep into around 30.04 and then or 30.13.04 and then look for those price action patterns that we're looking for, which would be wick rejections, engulfing candles. Or you can just simply be looking for the shifts on your lower time frame, which would be a pullback into a key level, that shift in momentum, illustrating that bearish sentiment, that first lower high, breaking that structural um, structural 
higher low there, and then looking for that retest of that previous structure, which would look something like this. So this is a price action pattern that I look for on my intraday timeframes. And this will be the area that I'll be looking for that retest of that structure. And obviously that brick wall break here, which is something that we talk about a lot where price is trading above the brick wall. And then we want to see that break um, out of that brick wall to then create those lower highs, break the lows, and then look for those retests. Now, I'm not saying that you have to wait for this to happen. You know, I do get in at these areas here. Um, but if you are looking for clear, concise behavioral patterns and trends, then this is the kind of setup you want to be looking for. Now, of course, we would be looking for the break of this low eventually. If pound USD does continue to break the lows of its own structure that we've just previously seen, we'd also expect that to happen around 1161 here on Euro USD. So if price doesn't come back to this level and we start to trade within this area, please just remember traders, this is the middle of nowhere. You do want resistance or supports to be formed before looking for trading opportunities. And the way you're going to do that is by scaling down. We don't have time to go through that now, but just be wary not to trade within the middle of these um, areas until price action creates those support and resistance levels. But this would be my plan, either a pullback to 1304 or a break of 1161. We'll see what happens moving into next week. Now, the next pair that we'll take a look at is USD Swiss franc. Now, as I said, we are seeing a lot of strength in the dollar. So do not, do not overlook that, whatever you do. Now, the rule of thumb is as long as we trade above the higher low here, we're still good for buys. So just like we looked at the consolidations on GU and Euro USD, we want to see price trading above this to look for continuation buys. Now, if it does break it, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're looking for sales. We still do have that consolidation area here. So it'll be the area that we're looking at to see if price pulls back for retest. Again, I do expect a lot more volume with the dollar. And uh, to be honest with you, I much prefer the plan of price breaking above this structure, creating that retest and that continuation back to the upside, just to avoid any gap downs or gap ups that we're going to have when the market opens on Sunday. And I do expect some gaps um, because of what's happening in the world. So I would prefer just the gap up, the continuation, the break above 9278, the retest and continuation back to the upside. So we'll see what happens with USD Swiss franc, but these would be my two plans. And of course, the retest at 9229. The next pair that we'll take a look at is pound JPY. Now, as I said, you will also see investors investing in the yen as it is a safe haven currency. We have had this break of this uh, consolidation here. Um, some of you might be saying, why didn't I put it here? This is classed as an indecision in the market where you have a breakout and a break back in. Almost see this as a breakout of the level and this green candle of similar range cancelling out the previous behavior. And as you can see, we never continue bullish. We got trapped within the range. So we're looking for price to break and close below this level. You have a beautiful retest here on GJ and this really strong move to the downside. So again, similar structures with pound USD and Euro USD here. We'd even be looking for price to pull back to around 155.82 for a continuation bearish, or we'll be looking for those selling opportunities once we break a major level in the market, which is going to be a structural low. Now, as I said, you can trade um, from the retest level or you can wait for the break. And if you don't get either, then what you're looking for traders is for the resistance or support to be formed within the middle of these two ranges and then look for trading opportunities once the patterns, the behaviors and the structures develop on the intraday timeframes. But these will be my plan or this will be my plan with Pound JPY. The next um, pair we look at is gold now you can see that we have been trending to the upside for a very long period of time um, i hope some of you have been able to capitalize on this it makes sense with all the uncertainty that was happening pre-war and then now obviously the war you can see that um, gold had been pushing up for a long period of time now we have had this very very strong impulsive move back to the downside which doesn't necessarily mean that we're bearish yet but what we do have to understand is that the dollar is starting to show signs of strength that doesn't necessarily again mean just because the dollar is strong that gold will go down but at the moment the sentiment is leaning towards that more so than it is bullish now, if we trade above 1886.99, we are still bullish traders. You, you know, we, we cannot deny ourselves of that fact. So we'll be looking for that continuation shift back to the upside. If you want to be patient, just to make sure we are pushing bullish, you're going to wait for price to break above some of these levels here and then look for those retests and those continuations. If you're not waiting for price to break above these levels here in the market to illustrate a continuation of this bullish trend, then you can simply look for your patterns around 1886. 
Now, with the pressure that's happening, one thing that I spoke about on my YouTube this week was the overall weight of this market is bearish. So please do not ignore that. Price still can break the structure and continue bearish no matter what happens in the markets, whether investors are invested in gold, whether dollar is strong or whatever else it is. Price action is price action. So we must listen to it. So if you do get that break of 1886, we have clean traffic all the way back down to some of these structure levels here around 1850. We could be pulling back for orders. We could be pulling back for a cheaper price to buy. We don't know what's happening, but these are the levels that I'll be working with. So I am on both sides here. Dollar strength, looking for the break of 1886 for sales back down to 1850. And if we hold 1886, then I'll be looking for the shift in momentum, preferably a strong bullish 4H candle close, and then looking for that continuation back up to 1916.85. If you are playing on the side of caution then you wait for the break of 1916.85 so then look for continuations back to some of these highs as again we have clean traffic back to the upside so a little bit of a mouthful on this one but you do have to plan appropriately according to the structures and the behavior of the market and the overall sentiment that we are gathering at this moment in time so all these scenarios make sense you just have to wait for those candle closes next pair we take a look at is usd cad now USD CAD is not doing too much, to be honest with you. And um, wherever gold goes, USD CAD usually follows. And you can see that this bearish move has been pushing to the downside. Now, as you probably know here, traders, um, oil is going to be affected massively by what is happening in the world. Petrol prices are going to go up. And uh, we can expect a lot happening on USD CAD, especially with the uncertainty. So you will see stages of dollar strength and then dollar weakness. But this is not necessarily the case with USD CAD because we know that there's a lot that's affecting it so i personally would say usd cad is not structured in the tidiest of ways to be honest with you we've had this breakout of this range that i've just highlighted here price attempted to stay bullish we couldn't hold the resistance or sorry the support at this retest level at 27.86 and we've broken back in I personally would say put this one on a back burner next week. There are, again, easier currencies to be trading or pairs to be trading. And uh, yeah, let's let this one go for now. So the next pair that we'll take a look at is New Zealand dollar JPY. Now, you can see the structure of this market is also extremely messy, the same as USD CAD here. Um, we had a consolidation in the market um, where price broke above for the first time in quite a while. Again, we had that retest and that continuation to the upside and then this immediate breakout. Now, I think the most significant level for me at this stage, um, looking at this structure, is going to be this area here around 77.46 for that retest continuation bullish. The overall sentiment of the market is leaning more towards buyers than it is um, bearish simply because we continue to hold the support levels in this market and the previous behavior of the market has been making higher highs and higher lows. So with that being said, you could look around 77.46 um, for a retest and continuation back to the upside. And if you want to be super patient just to make sure that you are on the right side of the market, then there is nothing wrong with you waiting for price to break above some of these majors around 78.30 to then look for those continuations to the upside. I wouldn't be opposed to doing this, especially here on New Zealand dollar JPY, when I could be trading pound USD or euro USD, um, which are much easier to trade versus some of these more neglected structures that have been breaking out and breaking back into structures um or key levels so i would say i'm more weighted towards buys than i am sales i'm a bit dubious about investors investing in the yen and uh, not seeing this continue bearish and then backing against that idea and then seeing this continue bullish so i think price action is going to have to do the talking here again we are in the middle of nowhere so just remember that be patient with new zealand dollar jpy and let's see what happens moving into next week now, the next pair that we we'll take a look at is New Zealand dollar USD. Again, you can see that we had been pushing bullish for quite some time. Now, we know that the dollar is strengthening and we've had this really strong movement to the downside. I would say, unfortunately, that this looks more bearish than it does bullish in this scenario, which then is kind of a conflict when looking at New Zealand dollar JPY. So I think that the best thing to do is to make sure that we are continuing to see that bullish sentiment if we're going to get it. And that would mean that we need a strong close above this level here. I don't think I'm looking for a retest. I'll probably be looking for a 4H candle close, and then I'll be looking to see if the next candle creates that wick, then to continue bullish, at least back to some of these highs. Now, I'm not sure that we'll break it, but that will be the precautionary measure that I put in place to make sure that I'm on the right side of the volume and momentum and sentiment of the market once we break 67.51. If we don't trade as we do have now what we call a, a resistance level in the market, 
And uh, I'll be looking for potentially the double top to look for these continuations back to the downside in line with USD strength here around 67.51. So what I really want to see is price leave for a period of time, then come back and then look for that continuation down. I'm looking for a clean V formation that looks something like this, where I can clearly identify that price is shifting in the direction that I want it to go, then holding the level, then again, shifting in terms of behavior and then continuing that behavior back down to a major level before we potentially get the break and the new lower low. So that's my plan again with New Zealand dollar JPY. I will say to you all that New Zealand dollar JPY and New Zealand dollar USD, USD CAD are very difficult structures to be trading. So if you're not used to trading these kind of structures, then just stay patient trade the cleaner structures like pound USD and euro USD and just wait for them to clear up and move on to better pairs. But that's the plan with these two. Next pair we'll take a look at is Aussie dollar USD. Again, we see the same structures as New Zealand dollar USD here, really strong bullish sentiment in the market, illustrating Aussie dollar strength. We've had this really strong bearish move to the downside illustrate in USD strength. Again, we have a level in the market, which is creating that potential resistance level for a potential lower high a double top continuation back down to the downside um, before we potentially make that new lower low. So I'll be looking for almost identical patterns and behaviors to New Zealand dollar USD. Granted, you can use both as confluence um, positive um, or correlation, excuse me. And uh, if both start moving in the same direction, then you had added confluence, to take these trades pretty confidently. Again, you know, this move has corrected back to around 70% of this current leg. So if we do break above the high here, we could be coming back to collect orders um, at this uh, level in the market where price initially created that really sharp movement to the downside. So if you do want to take advantage of buys, that's my point. You want a 4H candle close. You want a resistance formed. You want a wick to be formed, and then you want to see that shift in momentum break back to the upside. If you're not familiar with trading like this, again, I would suggest that you just wait for price to clear up and then look for cleaner patterns and structures on your uh, on other pairs. The next pair that we we'll take a look at is USDJPY. Now we can see again that the dollar is strengthening. This will fall in line with what we've seen on gold. If gold goes down, USDJPY goes up. At the moment, we've come to a very interesting level in the market where price is currently sitting at, I wouldn't say failing to break just yet. We've got a reaction, which is um, likely to happen around 115.75. If the sentiment of gold is going to continue bearish, then we anticipate this level to hold. If gold is going to continue to push bullish, then we anticipate, sorry, if gold is going to continue to push bearish, then we anticipate this level to be broken. If gold is going to continue to push bullish, then we anticipate this level to hold. So personally, I would say this. If gold continues to push bearish, you'll be looking for the break of 115.75.9 back to some of these structural highs here. If price doesn't, if gold pushes um, bullish, then you'll be expecting USDJPY to hold 115.75. And I personally will say, again, you're looking for your double top patterns to validate the level and behavior, or you're simply just looking for the shift in behavior back below this higher low that's been formed in this sequence to the upside. And then you'll just be simply looking for your retest of the structures and then your continuations back to the downside around some of these structural lows here. Now, this is just the way the market moves traders. I know this is a mouthful today, but I want to be very detailed in how I'm explaining this to you because there's a lot going on in the markets and I don't want you to miss out in these moves. So I'm highlighting all the variations that you can be looking for based on the behavior and structures of the markets that's developing. This has nothing to do with strategies. This is just how the market moves, okay? The final pair that we take a look at is Euro Yen. Now, in terms of euro yen, we are anticipating yen to strengthen. We do have this lower, low, lower high formation indicating a downtrend here. Now, what's happened is the market came back to a retest level. As you can see, we held it and we pushed bearish, but we couldn't continue that move back to the downside here. Now we've had this strong bullish move back to the upside, and we've really broken back into this consolidation where price is, you know, was sitting for a long period of time. The previous behavior from this level traders was a breakout and a break back in. We held for quite some time before we broke, closed, and then continued bearish. So I would say this, look, be very, very careful. Now we have 
this lower high here where price is respected multiple times before. I personally would just love to see a shift off of this level, strong bearish candle, wait for that support to form, look for that wick to form, and then look for that shift in momentum. Then if we have that, what we have here is a management level for break even or targets. And then you can look for some final targets back down at these lows here. The range from where price is at now back to the downside is, oof, wow. 182 pips so listen be patient you only need a few pips in this marketplace to uh, make money um so with an 882 pip range you definitely got a lot going for yourselves here just wait for the highest probability setups and as i mentioned before i like to see the shift in the market failing to break the highs then i like to see price breaking some of the structural lows coming back for that retest and then i'll be looking for that bearish move to the downside and i'll be observing this on my intraday time frame so make sure that you understand this because this is important you don't want to sell too early and then find yourself in a situation where price pierces through 130 14 we get trapped in this range or you get trapped in this range and then we have a really strong break to the upside and then you're screwed so be patient wait for the patterns to develop and form and then take your pick but personally i am seeing strength with the dollar and i like seeing strength with the dollar because it makes it very easy to trade in the markets um i've got my eyes on pound usd um, pound jpy um gold especially and uh, potentially some euro pairs as well looking for that U usd strength and jpy strength and uh yeah i mean we'll see what happens but i'm very very optimistic about next week and for the coming months there is going to be a lot of volatility traders sad to say uh there will be a lot of volatility so traders i hope you enjoyed the weekly forex outlook and reviews and setups remember this is just of my own opinion so what i say is what i think not necessarily what is going to happen again if you enjoyed this video make sure you smash that like button subscribe if you're new to the channel turn on notifications and as i said we've just launched the 12 week workshop if you've not joined check the link in the description take a look at the video read through the content and make a wise decision. Continue to trust the process.